Hi, this is Adip, July 29, 2019. You will be watching a 30 minute, the length of these uh, documentaries, 30 minutes. I decided to have an introduction before so that you will know why I'm sharing this with you. I wanted to contact Nejmia, the girl, the hero, 13 years old girl in this documentary. It's not scripted. She is herself, real herself. The rest are zombies. She lives in a city called Sana'a in Yemen, but Sana'a is similar to cities in Afghanistan and Iran and Saudi Arabia and many other countries. Um, she's trying to protect her freedom, God-given freedom, and to reach her potentials, but the rest are trying to suffocate her, to bury her alive in black sex, like my mother was. Um, therefore, I had a personal connection with this. It touched me deeply. And I was moved. I cried while watching when see this girl, 13 years old girl, very smart, capable, free spirit, trying to protect her honor, her freedom against those evil forces, um, forces that... Uh, basically accumulated because of uh, clergymen, male clergymen, misogynistic male clergymen, culture, poisonous culture that creates hell for women, half of the population, doomed them to slavery. Yes, veil is slavery. And um, therefore, uh, I have a lot to say on this issue. Uh, because I know from my mother how she was deprived from her freedom, from her identity, from simple joys of life, from sunlight. I have incredible memories which I shared in my life story. This is a Turkish version. I am uh, finishing its English version. Um, please uh, check uh, Quran a reformist translation and the manifesto for Islamic reform both are available for free as, as PDFs and also I don't make money from my books on religion I have translated the Quran into two languages Turkish and English perhaps I am the first one in history first one in history who has translated the Quran into two different languages and um, anyway and also I received a lot of insults and death threats. My friend was killed because of his criticism of Sunni and Shiite religions. Anyway, and uh, that, the reason for this uh, documentary uh, that I am uh, sharing here to connect with uh, Nejmiya, who was a 13 years old girl in Sana'a, Yemen, uh, he, uh, in year 2015, when this documentary was made and documentary was produced and directed by Khadija Al Salami I couldn't find her um, email or phone number therefore through this one I am appealing to you if any of you know how to uh, connect them please let me know either their numbers or email address or let them know about this so that I want to establish a fund for Najmia and girls like her who are free, who would like to be free and uh, so that with, hopefully she is not killed yet because they are buried alive in sex, black sex and uh, if they are not too strong, they may get killed. It depends on the ecology. 
and I hope that she's still, it has been about uh, four years. She's now 17 and 18 years old, but she has very oppressive and repressive society and family. And uh, I would like to extend uh, my help and uh, through my friends to bring her to the United States. And uh, I have uh, great friends as uh, educators. In fact, I have a charter school here. Uh, the principal and owner of charter school, good friends, uh, where my son study. One of them uh, graduated from Princeton University, the other from University of Arizona and Singoa. Both of my kids studied at that uh, school. Therefore, I would like to bring her there. She could study one or two years there and then apply for the best colleges because she has such a great potential, she, de she deserves all. Therefore, please, um, in the comment section, uh, let me know. And also, I'm going to put some information under the video uh, so that uh, try to find Khadija Al Salami, the producer and director of this movie, so that she will lead me to get in connection with Nejmiya. If Nejmiya is interested, I would just establish funds and ask people to contribute so that we will free slaves. Um, uh, please check 19.org over there. You will see uh, at under my name some videos, uh, English, and uh, get an idea why I am uh, so touched by this and moved and I invite you to help Muslim women Muslim, well they are not Muslim unfortunately, they are Sunni or Shiite to polytheistic ignorant religions unfortunately dooming the society into hell uh, the, the, any society who are so ingrate who wages war against their sisters, their mothers their daughters. That society is an ingrained, ignorant society which uh, basically deserves a lot of uh, troubles, self-sabotaging. Uh, um, thank you very much. Appreciate your help. Fifteen years ago, Sana streets, avenues, and little squares were not yet paved or dressed with stones and asphalt. Back then in this beautiful city where I grew up, the little streets of old Sana were still made of packed earth, often covered in mud or dust, and trash too. But I love this city. It was the city of my youth. Today, everything in Sana has changed for the better. But something sadder has slipped into the daily lives of the people of this city. Little by little, the shimmering colors of the dresses and veils of the girls and women have vanished. I remember the gaily dressed people mingling and commingling as they wound their way through the sometimes shadowy streets of the old town, giving the city a happier, less austere air than today. For about 15 years now, I see a procession of black phantoms gliding by, then vanishing into the dust of the city streets. For most girls, the veil doesn't bother them. It is synonymous with womanhood. It's their identity. I remember crying when I was five years old for my mother to give me a veil to disguise myself. Then, with the age, wearing the veil became like wearing a straight jacket. But where does the tradition of wearing the veil come from? The veil appeared in the Byzantine tradition as early as the first century, 
when the women of high society were veils. So, the veil is not a creation of Islam, contrary to what many think. It is a creation of civil society, a sort of buffer to protect the family's honor, and reinforced today by the popular opinion. Social pressure is such that few girls or women would chance removing their veil. This girl took me right back to my youth, and I decided to follow her around. I was like her, but still, I had never ridden a bicycle. It was unheard of for a girl in those days.
انا من ناحيتي لو اختي نضرب بس انا ما تلفلفي بس ما تزعل ها بس الشراب بس الشراب لا شر البنت تلفلف بس الشراب ما حلا البنت لا حلا البنت لا حلا البنت اه بس الشراب تختاوي شريفة شو ما هذا البراق وحكا لذي هتشيني بس حاجة ما هيش حلا أكل شو شو ما الهويش شو فوخر تاعه ما على ما تزعل ها ما من دي برجع ولا لا هذا ماشي the streets of Sana'a belong to her. She is comfortable wherever she goes. The murderous looks of the men and the boys and sometimes the women and girls don't scare her. Here, it is her life. She argues. Laughter comes easily to her. She's playful. When night falls, she's still there doing what no girl her age would dare to do. Marek, me najmi. الناس ما هو اللي بيفاجئهم في الشخصية؟ بيفاجئوا مني يعني زي ما تقول اخترت مع الاولاد مع هذا هذا اللي بيتفاجئوا مني انه يعني يعني منظر مش هو مش هو طبعا يعني لا لو هي بنتك أم كنت تخليها من النجمين؟ لا ابدا ما اقدرش هذا الشيء ليش؟ يعني مش يا ما يا البنت يعني حرام اللي تدخل مع الاولاد وكذا ما يصلحش احنا الدين الاسلامي ما ي... يعني نتكلم في هذا الشيء البنت تخطب مع الوالد وكذا هل هو موجود هذا في القرآن؟ مش يعني مكتوب في القرآن يعني أنا ما أسمع إنه أحاديث والله In the Quran, there does not appear to be any passage that clearly imposes the veil or the segregation of all Muslim women as many who deliberately attribute this custom of the veil to this religion. The sole aim is to hide women from others' views. <laughs> محمد <تصفيق> 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 تحترم اخوان كبير تتغطى الحجاب في العاب لكن الحين بدي اتكلم مع الشباب. حرام اني اسمخ بنت شلون هذا الوضع. لو شو من حق العيال كلام هذه الشاطره اشطر من هذا اعظم من الرجال هذا اعظم من الرجال. لا تفكر كلام الناس. تكسر عجل الرجال. Najmiya found the solution. Since she refuses to wear the veil that her parents and society demand, she wears it around her waist. 
كذا الجمهور اليمني كفيت عليه مي هل مي نسرى القبائل نسرى القزقز نسرى كيف ندوى كذا هاي ما عكس عيلاني وشكا فتش عنا سامحني يا عم وإحنا عجبنا من تحكس عندهم نجميه seems so comfortable with herself that she fascinates everyone even with an ice cream cone She's playful and provocative. Then her charm wins you over, and the smile lights up even the stoniest of faces. وانت اخترتي انت وقلتي له بوش ها قلتي له بوش اقول له بي ابوش عاد يضربش بعد ليه ما يضربني الحب عذبي كل هذا الشباب كيف قالت لا ماشي قالت عليك انت قالت انك مؤدب ومحترم انت مؤدب ايه بالضحاك خذي باي هاك ليش تضحكوا علي؟ ليش تضحكوا علي؟ ليش تضحكوا علي؟ ليش علي؟ ليش 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 لما كنت أخليها مثل نجمية تجي الساعة كذا؟ مش هخليها يعني شربطها ليش عاد تربطها؟ لا ما هو ما هو ليش ليش؟ لو بخوت ايش؟ لما كنت أخليها تخرج مثل نجمية هاي كذا؟ ليش؟ 
عندي دار لو عندي لو عندي اختي لو ربطت ساعه طلعت من ضاله هذا يخرج هذا تبع امريكا مش عندنا باليمن ما ادري وبنته خارج هذا رجال تفرقوا بين البنت والولد مع ان البنات والبنات سواسيه امام الله وامام القانون تمام امام الله وامام القانون المره المره ناقص ستي ناقص ميره ناقص عقل ناقص عقل لا هذا الرجل ما بيعرف يقول لك لا 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 حرام 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 ما <تصفيق> 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 <تصفي
أكبر سرق واحدة ما إحنا حول حولها أنا جالس Najmiya is often with her little sister. She is begging in her education. She calls out and Najmiya is bored. She doesn't want to stay at home, but everybody criticizes her when she plays with boys or girls in the streets. She walks the streets of all Sana'a in search of new adventures that will help her to cultivate her difference. She manages all by herself to entertain a neighborhood, a crossroad, a little square. <laughs> this evening again, she is outside. So far, life for her is easy. She rents a bicycle in a flash and gives a demonstration to the boy renting the bikes, who is awed by the brashness of this girl. He cannot believe it. <laughs> Just as I pull up in front of her home, I'm driven by a mad desire to see where she lives. How would her parents react? You see, Najmiya is terribly enduring. What concerns me is what will become of her. How will she deal with the society's pressure as she grows older? Because I know from experience that you have to be tremendously strong to resist the onslaught of traditions. For now, what saves her is her youth, her brashness, but more than anything else, her carefree nature. I 
تعرفي هذاك صعب الفضة العقاي افتجع انا اتشلوني صعب الفضة سر يدعي الفندم السراجي سر يدعيهم كلهم يدوروني يدوروني قلت هيك كذبت الرقم التليفون رقم السيارة قلت له ما قال لي وين انت؟ قلت ما قالوا لي سمحت لي قالوا لي خبطني قلت له شلون شو دايك؟ قلت ما جاي قلت من غير سنة مطعم دايك قلت له هاي ثانية شو الفندم اللي بيدوني منها مثل عجاي صلوة دايك ما بش بعد ما هذا الصبح حدناني لبس اختي بعاد لفت أهرب شيء سافر في مصر يا أخي هذا صنع عن الديتيل قالك يقولوا لي يلبس حجاب يلبس بلطة والله يبرد ويروح يخلوني يا ذاك تعبون الناس زي صيخ فوق في يضربون لسعدي يخلون إيش من قراسة ولا شيء يجنون أنا زي نا شو مفق شو مسافر شو مهرب من هذا الصنع عن القديم أصل الديتيل قالك يتيا مرض how much longer will she continue to defy this world that is suffocating her with its traditions? A few years? Her whole life? I would love to give her some advice, but that craziness that makes her live off the beaten path is not one that can be communicated. She is in you. She belongs to you. And I hope she will be for as long as possible. So Najmiya, keep up the good fight and always keep that smile of yours, so full of hope and defiance. That's how you win in life. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>